Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. For anyone who doesn't have arachnophobia, please save me from the fucking spiders, man. And for those of you who do, run while you can. Welcome back to Grounded. This is episode two of this hellhole, and guess what? I'm still stuck here. And once again, I have no way of getting out of this fucking game unless I beat it. For those of you who are new here, I highly recommend you go watch episode one. It's linked in the description and in the play card to the upper right hand corner of your screen. I'll give you a sec. I welcome back. All right. Before I get into this episode, I want to thank everyone so much for the support on episode one. It is by far the most viewed and liked video on my channel and as of recording it sits at almost 700 views and 19 likes we gained almost 10 subscribers from that video alone seeing that amount of support just makes me really pumped to bring you all along this journey with me and it appears that 98 percent of you guys that watch the video are not subscribed so if you guys like the video and you guys want to see more content make sure to drop a like and subscribe and i also want to give you guys a quick apology I'm going to post the five chapters that I'm going to give you guys today. Um, I want to apologize for the late upload on this. I don't know when it's going to upload, but I don't think I'm going to get it done by Sunday. Um, I fucked up my shoulder pretty bad. I got a pinched nerve in there, and I had to take a day and two off of editing. With that being said, let's hop right into it. Chapter 6, The Pond Lab, Part 1. We start off this chapter by talking about our game plan for this session. At some point, I got the idea in my head that Kate had been playing the game without me with Caleb. Jay, we both upgraded something. I would upgrade something at you the guys smithy. Did not play. I will cut you. No, we did it when you were fucking See, around with him. I told you. What? Told me what? He would be upset if we played. <laughs> As anybody should be. What did you upgrade? But you were trying to play without Caleb. <laughs> oh, that's fine. You guys can do all the boring stuff. I'll get here when it's fun. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, In this thing, the, Jay. the last thing that I did for the last two hours of our session last time, yeah, you didn't need to be here for that. Exactly. You're just supposed I to think be I here just... to explore the lab. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that? She tried to sneak some playtime and progression in without me. Listen to her sinister giggle. <laughs> At least my boy Kaleeb has got my back. I started upgrading a few things, and once again, we plunged back into the fucking spider-infested water to map the way to the lab. After a few minutes of fighting spiders, we dived deep into the depths. Kate and Caleb died a few times from lack of air, and to this day, I still don't know how they managed to die so many damn times. Finding a research outpost, I looked around and got my bearings as Kate and Caleb respawned. Quickly after that, I died as well and worked my way back to the outpost again to investigate further. Just before arriving though, messing with some keybinds or something, and Shazam, we found out about mutations existing. So what's funny is that it's right next to the fucking inventory. Like how the fuck did I miss that? One of the mutations is called Mertine. It gives another 10 seconds of air, which is so beneficial for this point in the game. Maybe they didn't have this mutation enabled or something. Maybe that's why they died so many times. After making a break for it and swimming as far and as fast as I could to get more information, I finally found the entrance that the game normally thinks she'll go through, with a T-Rex at the end. Kate seems surprised at this nerd's athletic prowess. I found the T-Rex. There's no way you found the T-Rex. I did. You're on the opposite side of the map. I'm pretty I sure. Swear to God, I How did you get here. over here so fast? <laughs> I'm underwater. After finding the true entrance, we continued forward discovering a sealed door. Entering the outpost, I looted some chests while Caleb opened a bioscan door with an air pocket inside. Kate and Caleb barely made it as they were starting to black out. Oh, oh my god, I found the surface. No way. Yeah. Oh, I had no seconds left. You, I was blacking out. I was too. <laughs> Getting into the air pocket, we found a tape that talked about how Dr. Wendell's family absolutely hates cabbages, and he doesn't understand why. It's so good for you, but they just toss them aside, he says. What's funny about this is my girlfriend also hates cabbages. I feel like Dr. Wendell right now. I'm completely on his side. I love cabbages. As the tape was playing, I found a file talking about the experiments he did on Brussels sprouts and other foods that were successful and ready for testing. 
Their growth time would be a few weeks to 90 days. As I read, Kate found another file dated a couple weeks later that talked about the fibers of plants and human muscle tissue. To be honest, even while editing this, Caleb and Kate and I still have no idea what was going on in this test and it uses a lot of big sciencey words. While Kate read, I looked at a terminal that was in the room next to us, and I stepped outside, realizing it had something to do with the symbols on the door outside. After a sudden realization, I whisked off to what looked like a switch, and I flipped it. And then there was another one. Looks like I just need one more. And that's when Kate and Caleb wanted to do one, because they got angry that I was moving ahead. Oddly enough, that happened to be the hardest one, so hee <laughs> hee. Probably should have done all three, because Caleb kept dying in this session and it was definitely weighing on his mind regardless of that fact kate asked caleb to do it even though she was literally right there after flipping the switch caleb became fish food and i went in there to see if he missed anything finding a scab i grabbed it and it was at this point <laughs> holy shit i didn't even notice that skeleton over there i'm just now seeing this in the edit so i'm gonna have to go back and look at that in part four it told me i could change the look of my scab with one of the ones we found they give you different types, so it changes the color of everything. Really? Yeah. Like right now. Yeah, what? I'm talking to Jared. After changing my operating system around, I looked at the icon key for the first time, and there's a lot left to uncover in this game, it seems. <laughs> As of recording this, I've already got part 3 recorded as well, and I know what most of this stuff is already, but for the context of this video and for future videos, I won't talk about stuff until I know what it is on screen. Like this comment from last video. It's a great tip, but if I implement it into the gameplay, it won't show until at least episode 4. One thing about changing the UI is that you can't see what it truly looks like until you close your menu. I don't know if this bugs anyone else, but adding a preview display would definitely be a great quality of life add-on. It was at this point that Caleb left the game because dying a lot was getting very irritating and it was late at night for him. Chapter 7, Exploration. The next day. <sighs> oh shit, we're recording still? After logging back on, I left the outpost to meet up with Kate to make a game plan for the session. We decided it's ladybug killing time. With the failure of not upgrading our gear last episode, we prioritized it this episode, as they would be vital moving forward. You know what's funny? So far, we haven't really had to deal with any of the big spiders, right? Well, don't be sad! This is the time in the video where I shit my pants a few times and run away like a little bitch! Kate had the fantastic idea to go get a wolf spider stuck in some fucking clovers and try to kill it! With no arrows to her name at all! What's funny is that she asked me for help. This fucker was matrixing my arrows the whole time. How am I supposed to help? Remember last episode when those spiders were kissing? Well, his girlfriend showed up to free this man, and then he started bum rushing me like a black football player named Requise. After getting my ass involuntarily ate out by a big black man, uh, I mean spider, I hopped on a leaf wondering what I should do. Seeing how there were two of them up there now, I was scared shitless. Kate, like a bat out of hell, jumped out of nowhere into the water. And this man, thinking he was Jesus, he thought he could walk on water, and he slipped right in as well and died. Man, I really gotta give props to the devs for making it so that if a wolf spider falls into the water and it dies, it doesn't give you anything at all. This is a great way to avoid the use of cheese in your game. On especially what I would consider to be a low-level boss at this current stage in the game. Oh shit! Kate, run! <sighs> no, he did! No, he did, Kate! I feel like they're on fire. He did not run away. Damn. Is he still like damaged? Ow! Kinda. Ow! Oh, shit, there's two of them. Two of them. Oh my god, he fell in the water. Who did? This wolf spider. Let me tell you, Shaliqua did not like how Kate drowned her new hot date, and she wanted our cheeks. 
like you're coming to the water, bad boy. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> Oh, brother. <gasps> he fell in the water. <laughs> in the water. Fuck you, bitch. That's what I thought. I can't believe I eluded him. Are you Someone okay? Someone help me. No. <laughs> You're gonna be fine, Pete. <laughs> I am not okay. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Good job, Jay. No, you did it. Fuck you. It was at this point that Kate went AFK to talk with Kalo about what just happened and probably some personal stuff as well. I was left alone to my own devices once again. We all know that's a terrible idea. Deciding to jump back into the pond and do some further exploration for any missed loot and BAM! A locked door opened before my eyes. But much to probably your dismay, I left it for later exploration when Kate and Kalo get back. So looks like you're gonna have to wait. Once Kate got back, we started on getting better tools. And beginning with a hammer, we needed to kill some more bombardier beetles so we can get some bombardier beetle parts. So off we went to the tree, thinking there was some next to us after Kate set the radar. And would you look at that? There was none over here at all. But you wanna know what is over here? A fucking orb weaver spider. And let me tell ya, he was all for shooting his sticky white fluid all over Kate. I mean, look at this arch. Mmm, oh, 10 out of 10. Excellent form. Hey, get your mind out of the gutter. I'm clearly talking about spider silk, you fucking degenerates. Wondering why the radar was wrong. Well, it turns out, Kate didn't set the fucking radar to the part we needed. For once, it looks like I'm not the retard. It was set to something else. After correcting her mistake, we worked our way over to the milk carton to kill two beetles, but ran into some mosquitoes. They were a pain to kill, but we took them out. After killing the beetles, Kate and I returned home and made a hammer. That's one out of three completed. Taking a short break, we both went AFK for a little, and it's funny that my recording picked up on me watching some Clash of Clans tip videos. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw something weird and tapped back in to check it out, taking a second to register what I was seeing. For the mortar shell to drop, boom, there goes the barbarian up top, so we don't have to worry about that. Sparky's gonna take out this rapid rocket. We're gonna put a barbarian at this trash hut. Ah! Ah! God damn fantastic idea, Jay. Shoot the fucking spider. Looks like I'm back to being a dumbass again. After being an idiot, I hopped into the water and hoped I had escaped. And just to be sure, I looked around and I didn't see anything. Until... Especially the big bastards. Even if they are misunderstood, as people say, I don't give a fuck. Under attack. Screaming about. Kate! Go to sleep. We can't! Okay. <gasps> That's why! Oh, he's gonna destroy the house. We gotta get away. That's why, he's, Kate! He's That's in the house! Why?
That's why I'm yelling. He's gone. I looked away for like two seconds and swiggity swoogity, I'm a coming for that booty pulls up. This time I was ready. I was nice and lubed up, getting right back into the water real quick. With Requis now leaving the area, we went to sleep to continue our objective the next day. Waking up the next day with signs of Caleb's handiwork, I pondered when he would return, bringing joy back to us. I didn't even say anything, and out of nowhere, Kate said, Babe, Jay's asking about you. He said you're cute. I did not say such thing. While it may be true, I never said such thing. This must be a sign that our hero will return once again. Not long after that, we ran into a ladybug, and it was slaughtering time. For the next half hour or so, Kate and I worked on miscellaneous things, like gathering food and base upgrades while we waited for Caleb to join. After all that time passed, we just decided to go on an expedition and find out more about the areas of the yard we haven't explored yet. We do need to go to the hedge as well. What do you want to do? Aw, uh, Ant Hill. Something that's actually going to help us. Ant Hill. That's not going to help us. We want to do ladybugs? Ladybugs, then Ant Hill. The Ant Hill doesn't do anything for us. Well, I want to explore the Ant Hill. I haven't played this game, Kate. Okay? I'm just telling you, it doesn't. <laughs> Do oh boy, little did we know at the time, the ant hill has one of the most vital crafting ingredients for progression. Heading off on our journey, we went straight south as we had to stop by the hedge for some berry leather. And at some point, we just started walking over to the southwest, killing bombardier beetles once again. Spotting some gum, Kate ran over to it and discovered something strange. Come on, I want to go see what this gum is. There's probably some shit, like, tucked away Watch in it. Here. Speedy coming through. Ooh, called it. <gasps> Did you find it? Hasty written note. Dear who so, I have no idea what's going on. I woke up with four other kids in a giant lawn. I tried to wake them, but they're super zooped out. And honestly, seem better off tucked in that in that box for right now. All I know is all I know is they're little huts with too many too many computers and not enough snacks. Spiders are hunting me and I need to find a safe place. Rest of note is torn. Yeah, so this is like part of the, like a hidden Easter egg part of the lore. In the case that we came out of, um, there's five spots and there's only four players to pick from. So this is like supposedly the fifth person. Huh. Oh, there's another one. Isn't that great? Oh shit, gas mask. Who is this fifth person and where are they? The only way to find out is to progress the story. Entering the haze, we discovered dead bugs of all sorts, and some had fungus growing on them, and then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Cordyceps. Cordyceps fungus. So The Last of Us has something called the Cordyceps fungus, which takes over the human head. But there's a real fungus in the world called Cordyceps that takes over bugs. Dude, I got a fucked up larva. Oh my god! They hurt so bad. Hey, there's a head right here. Can't pick it up. My inventory's full. This game only gets better and better. They're infected with cordyceps. That is so cool. And the worst part about this whole situation in game is they hit like fucking trucks. Good god. After getting a taste for what's next, we went back to killing ladybugs and set up base camp at a research outpost. While we were there, we went and scanned for the red ant hill. And bingo, there's a chip. So no matter what, we needed to go there at some point, as I anticipated. So take that, Kate. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I'm better. I am better! Waking up the next day, we ventured to the hedge and found a... Watch me get copyright claimed for that. After collecting all that goodness, we discovered one of many cassette tapes found around the yard and then fought a never ending train of enemies. I commented on how tanky I was getting. My man Pete is becoming a tank. 
He's a unit. They call him Petatron. Like Megatron, but Pete. I like to said. It's like a pedotron. Like a pedo train? Like running a train on a pedo? <laughs> like a human centipede, but of pedos. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> they deserve that. They deserve that, for sure. We shot down as many blueberries as we could and started our trek home, running into a spider lane. Soccer balls. Oh shit. <laughs> Hi, stranger. It's been a while. Why? Really sick. Yeah, Requis snuck up on my ass again, and this time he caught me dropping the soap. Officially getting close to home, I killed another ladybug, and this time it dropped ahead. Just what we've been looking for. Finally crafting the axe. Having all the ingredients to make the rest of the hammers, we finally had our upgrades. To test it out for the next few minutes, we cut down as much weed as we could. Smoke weed every day. Don't do drugs, kids. Drugs are bad. Okay. With that much weed, Kate and Caleb and I should be set for the next month. Ah, that shit won't last a week with Kate around. Because she does so much building. We filled up our storages and then emptied our inventories. And our hero arrived. With Caleb here, I told him about what we had done up to this point, and it was finally time to take a dip into Chapter 8, The Pond Lab Part 2. Okay, okay, I won't make anybody wait anymore. Let's hop into this next chapter. Diving back into the pond, we made our way to the hydraulic doors that we had opened earlier. Inside was a couple locked doors, but with one path open, it was the right choice to go. Entering the room, we found what appeared to be a brain, but was actually a genetically modified super cabbage, or a Brussels sprout. We weren't really sure at the time, because it looked kind of funny looking. On the desk in front of us, there was a file, titled, Ham's Test, Day 36. Once again, I have no idea what he goes on about in this file, but from what I can assume and infer, it talked about some growth complications that were occurring, and how Dr. Wendell wanted to find a way to cultivate their growth. Continuing forward, we found a dark room, and it was clear that we needed some sort of light. Kate took off to get underwater torches, and while she did that, I spent my time digging up koi scales and sunken bones, just because I could. In the process of doing that, I found a sunken chest. We'll probably find something cool in there at some point, but we're gonna need to unlock it first. Returning to the dark room, we went inside and found an old computer system with a chest inside. For all intents and purposes, it completely looked like a dead end. I immediately was thinking how strange it was, because I thought for sure that this would be the way to get to the other side of the window and proceed through the lab. Thinking of only one other thing, I entered the capsules that I had found earlier. And guess what? It was nothing but loot! This absolutely stumped the shit out of us. After spending a legit solid 15 minutes looking around, Kate just decided, you know what? I'm gonna go look it up. And guess what? My hunch was right. Going back into the hole in the ground, it showed a path that I had completely missed somehow. Yeah. That's so weird. There's a chest in here. Did you fucking go through it? No, I've just been in the hole. I was here the whole time. There's nothing here. And I said, oh my god! Just wait. I'm waiting. I thought this was just a wall. Yeah, it's we're not. retarded. We are. This actually makes me feel so retarded because I'm normally the person to over-search a room looking for shit. After swimming through the hole, we had made it to the other side, and there was a tape sitting there on the desk, so we played it. This one talks about how Dr. Wendell is in perfect health for somebody 20 years older than him. Jesus Christ. Like, what are these tests doing to him? This all stems from the shrinking and growing process occurring, apparently. His wife asked him to stop, but he refused, saying... He wasn't stopping till he had his scientific breakthrough. Quote, if this means sacrificing 20 years of my life, then so be it. 
Just around the corner, I found a file talking about muscle sprouts, their biometric structures, and how healthy they are for you. Walking back to the entrance of the outpost, we ran into a group of Tazies. They must have come from the unlocked door on the other side of the room. Going through the door led us to a massive room with even more Tazies all over the place. After killing all the Tazies, we looked around for a second and came to the conclusion that this is the dome that we saw in the pond earlier, and there were files and tapes all over the place. The tape talked about how Dr. Wendell had missed Thanksgiving due to his research, and his wife had given him the ultimate ultimatum. His science or his family. You don't turn your back on family. Apparently he didn't get that memo. The first two files talked about the muscle sprouts and how they're not growing correctly at all. The cellular makeup was getting damaged from growing too quickly. The next file takes place about three months before. The experiments were failing and the plants were loose and limp. Something would need to be added to accelerate their growth in a productive manner. There was also a side note in the file where his wife had thrown her wedding ring into the pond. He wrote a poem about it, strangely enough, and named the koi Trudy too. So I guess the koi's name is Trudy? That confused us a little bit for a second because we were like, did the wife turn into a koi fish? With that one down, there was only two more labs. I swam around the pond checking out the capsules that had just opened and I found one that was a little strange. It was completely flooded and had a whiteboard in the room that displayed a chest and its key and some other random indecipherable things. Checking the door, it also needed a key card, just like a few other places we've seen before. Looking through the window, there wasn't much inside, so with nothing left I could do, I just went home. Once again, we took a short break and I made a bubble helmet. It seemed interesting, so when I hopped into the water, it gave me three minutes of air. I wanna see how much air I have now. Holy shit, I've got three minutes of air. That is so broken. Hey, remember the mosquitoes that we killed earlier? Well, they gave me the ingredients to make rapiers with lifesteal out of them. And let me tell you, they are by far my most favorite weapon in this game so far. This made surviving in the front line way easier. I highly recommend that you guys grab one if you can. After re-equipping ourselves with better gear and weapons, we met up with Burgle. This time he talks about how the regulator cell for the expansion process of the spacer, that's what makes us big and small, is damaged. He had a spare cell on hand, but it was empty and needed to be filled with what's called the embiggening cocktail. He checks his memory and Processing! Processing! Error! Missing directory! The directory you attempted to copy does not exist. Boo doo doo! Cheese and fries! Boo doo doo! It the formula for the embiggening cocktail is not in my memory. It must be on one of the remaining super chips. Oh shit. Of course it fucking is! I should have seen that coming a mile away. Listening further, he tells us that Wendell had a hunch that the company he used to work for, known as Ominent, continued his work after he left. With us here, that all but confirms it. There must be two spacers. Wendell's is clearly damaged, so there's no other possibilities or reason for us to be small unless there are two. Which leads us to the question, why would Ominent shrink a bunch of kids and take their memories away? Oh, we also missed a tape in here as well from last episode. It talks about how the spacer tests on non-living objects were a massive success and they are ready for human trials. Chapter 9, Antics Unleashed. For the next 20 minutes, all I did was gather food and sort stuff in a chest. And then I got called out by Requis. He had trapped my friends on a branch. Equipped it with the highest level gear out of the three of us. I got lubed up just in case. It was time to nut up or shut up. I ran in there as fast as I could and I saved my friends from Requis and Shaliqua. They did not like it when I showed up. I slaughtered them both and then made Kate a bow out of their bodies as a war trophy. Some hero Caleb turned out to be, he's more like a damsel in distress. It wasn't long until one of our memories came back. Oh shit. Oh. Specimen vitals are stable and holding. Looks like we've done it. Great job, everyone. Let's set up three more trials for replication. Uh, sorry to crash your party. The Defense Department has arrived early to discuss Project Orc. The director needs you to be present at the meeting. <sighs> Not sure what's worse, our director or a three-hour meeting with the military. I wonder if this is gonna happen after every chip we gather. Spending another 20 minutes on food gathering and house repairs once again, we finally made the short hike to the anthill. 
Once I arrived, I planned on waiting for Caleb and Kate to arrive, but I got swarmed. And it was obvious at this point, with dozens of dead ant soldiers around me, that I was very overgeared for this section. They literally did nothing to me at all. Going inside the ant hill, we all split off and explored different areas. I hit the jackpot on literally every area that I looked. I found the burgle chip, it wasn't that hard to find. And right next to it was another corpse, but this time I did see it and I did loot it. We continued investigating the hill, finding ant eggs everywhere. These were the vital crafting ingredients that we needed. What for you may ask? Explosives. Little did we know at a time, like a real bomb, these guys had a timer on them. And as it fills up, they hatch into a variety of red ant breeds. We might need a base around here to make bombs quickly. It wasn't long before we found the queen. The queen, I'm waiting for Caleb. Don't get too close. You can see it through here, Jay. Uh, I, I ran out to the research station. Oh, shit. I know, but I don't want to fight this thing without you. Oh, yeah, yeah, It's yeah. huge. Holy shit, yeah. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> okay, Trump, calm down. Preparing for what seemed to be a big boss fight, we entered her chamber, and... Nothing? She's friendly? We were so confused. None of it made any sense. But apparently she wanted to make a deal. Don't you know we Americans don't have the greatest history with Monarch? Especially after their soldiers tried to kill us. She wanted a juicy mushroom sandwich. I have no idea why, but if we were to give it to her, she'll give us something random. I will be coming back to this because I'm very invested in this anthill. Returning home, Kayla popped off for the night. And Kate and I kind of just sat there talking for about 20 minutes. And then we had the amazing idea that what if we built up to the haunted house thing that I've been wanting to go to since day one. We started building the staircase to heaven, and once we landed on unfamiliar terrain, the enemies were just as strong as wolf spiders. Definitely not a place we should go at this stage of the game. For those of you who don't know, building up there should not be possible. But it is. Apparently this game has two endings, and one of them involves the castle. Yes, apparently it's a castle, not a haunted house. It doesn't take too long before we realize we probably should not be up here at this point in the game. Kate ended up dying and we got attacked by something. Can I hear a lot? Incoming payback, Larva. Jay, I need you to come home, please. What the hell? I rushed back as fast as I could, but Kate with her new bow made quick work of the invaders. Chapter 10. Exploration part two. Okay, now that the antics are over, we spent the next half hour wondering what to do next. And we came to the conclusion that it's probably best to build a massive wall for safety. Not only do we got to worry about Requise and his gang, now we had to deal with random invaders coming out of nowhere. So we spent the next half hour making the great US wall. And I was chopping weed like a madman to keep up with the demands. <laughs> With all the blueprints and the planks put in place, we were missing something. Do you see that? Enhance vision. I fucking knew it! God damn it, Kate! I knew you would blow through all the fucking weed! Deciding to take a look at the other side of the yard, just past the tree, we ran into a lot of orb weaver spiders. But at this point, they were just kind of farmable. They aren't really much of a threat unless you're fighting three or four of them at the same time. We did find something cool, though. It's called the Franken line. It's really an etch-a-sketch. It was kind of cool to mess around with. While exploring, not too far away from the Franken line, we found a picnic table with bees all over it. There was also another cassette tape. Bust a jam dance mix. Dude, listen to how defeated she sounds. Like, she is kaputskis. I'll tell you, seven and a half hours of gameplay up to this point will definitely do that to you. It was at this point with all the bees around, Kate came to the decision she wanted bee armor. So we slaughtered as many bees as we could. And let me tell you, it was a lot. What the hell? What the hell is that? What? The, uh, 402 gas thing? If we climb yeah. up on that thing, we can turn it off. 420. <laughs> <laughs> I God, that's spy. fucking hilarious. It says oh. weed killer. Weed killer I don't 420. I think you can turn it off. You might be able but to fix the lead. Maybe. Because it wouldn't make sense for you to be able to climb up that. Yeah, you might be right. What amazing foreshadowing for episode 3 passed me. Seeing all the shit on the table, we were so confused why we couldn't get on top. We literally spent the next half hour trying to get up there by exploring the area around it. We didn't find anything, but... 
That shovel does look a little suspicious. With our morale low and kind of just treading water in progression at this point, we gave up on the picnic table objective and just left it for another chapter. On the way home, I stopped by a suspicious crack in the wall and found a milk molar. On the way back up, I just assumed that I had missed something. And by golly, I did. There's a crack in the wall. And look at that. We need bombs to progress. I knew that hill would be important. Mm. That crack that I found? Yeah, it's way mm -hmm. up, but we need explosives, so we need to go get some time. Shiz. We need to go to the haze, basically. Right. I guess the haze will also be important. Foreshadowing for episode 3. Ah, no peeking! That's not even edited yet. And with that, episode two comes to an end. I know these last two chapters were really short, but believe it or not, these last two chapters was five hours of raw footage. Most of it was just a lot of AFK footage and miscellaneous tasks that wouldn't make great content. But regardless of whatever it is, I still had to go through it manually at two times speed to make sure there was nothing inappropriate and or personal information in there. But with that being said, holy shit, that was a long one's edit. The first 20 minutes of this video alone had the same amount of raw footage as episode one. This video was like nine nine hours of that so once again i apologize for the late upload on this guys sometimes life happens and it's been about four days since i recorded the intro and a little update on my shoulder it hurts a lot especially in the mornings i can't move it around too too much but i can now rotate it around which is kind of nice i just can't raise it past my head otherwise it hurts I really got nothing else to say at the end of this episode other than thank you guys for everything. I'll try to get episode 3 out as soon as I can, but I'm going to take a couple days as a break just to make sure my shoulder can heal even better. And it won't be long before I start recording episode 4, 5, and 6, or 7, or however many it takes. I just want to say I love y'all. I'll see y'all in episode 3.